Hi, I'm JJ and welcome back. In this lesson, we're diving deeper into how software helps you visualize data with blocks. You've already connected to your data source and map data fields in the previous lesson. So now let's expand upon those skills by exploring software's various block types and why they're essential for structuring your app, enhancing your app with search, filtering, and sorting capabilities, a quick overview of the actions and visibilities tabs, which will give you an even more control over your app, and finally, creating a dynamic detail page for record specific content. Are you ready? Let's get started. In the previous lesson, we introduced the three main types of blocks, which are dynamic blocks, static blocks, and container blocks. Now let's take a deeper dive into why these blocks are important. Dynamic blocks allow you to display and interact with real time data from your connected sources, such as Airtable, HubSpot, or SQL. These blocks are the foundation of most business applications because they let you manage update and showcase your data dynamically. For each dynamic block, you can customize the data source where you can define where the block retrieves its data, such as a spreadsheet or a database, the content where you can configure how your data appears, like displaying names, dates, or images, depending on the block type, the actions where you can determine what users can do, such as clicking to see more details, editing items, or starting automated workflows. The style, where you can adjust the block's appearance, change fonts, colors, spacing, and more to match your brand style. And finally, the visibility, where you can control who can see the block and whether it appears on desktop, tablet, or mobile devices. These options help you make your app more personalized, functional, and visually appealing. Alternatively, static blocks provide static content that remains the same for all users until manually updated in software. Here are some examples of how static blocks can be used. For hero blocks, they can help you create strong visual headlines or banners for landing pages. Your FAQ blocks can help you display common questions and answers to help users navigate your app. CTA blocks, which are also known as call to action blocks, can help you encourage users to take specific actions, such as signing up to your application or contacting support. For each static block, you can edit key components like the layout, headings, and subheadings, depending on the block type. Adjust visibility settings to determine who can see the block and where it appears in your app. Since static blocks don't change dynamically, they are perfect for content that remains consistent for all users. Now, our final block type is our container block, which allows you to group and organize other blocks into structured layouts. These are particularly useful for creating dashboards, detail pages, or multi-section layouts. Some of the examples include Tabs, which divide content into different sections that users can easily switch between. This is great for organizing product details, specifications, or different types of user information. Or columns, which display content side by side to create structured layouts. For example, you can place charts next to key metrics in a business dashboard. For each container block, you can customize the layout to adjust the overall structure, headings, and subheadings. You can also select which blocks will be included inside each container. And finally, you can manage which users can see the container and its content via the visibility settings. By leveraging dynamic, static, and container blocks, you can create a well-structured, interactive, and visually appealing app in software. However, a great app isn't just about displaying data. It's about helping users find exactly what they need. And software makes this easy with built-in tools for search, filtering, and sorting. For adding search, open your block settings and navigate to the content tab. Scroll to the search and filters section and enable the search bar. Select the fields users can search, such as task names, comments, or who the onboard and manager is. Now, users can quickly find the data that they need by typing into the search bar, no matter how much data is in your database. For adding inline filters, below the search bar section, you'll find the filter section which allows users to refine the data that they want to see. For example, add a filter to filter the team so users can view the team members on each team. For adding sorting, you can define sorting rules to organize your data based on different field types, such as names, dates, or numerical values. Simply navigate to the source tab, select a field to sort by, such as name, A to Z, or newest first, and adjust how many items display per page. You can also set a custom empty state message to inform users when no records match their criteria. By combining search, filtering, and sorting, you can create a more interactive, functional, 
and user-friendly app experience. Now, let's discuss conditional filters. Conditional filters, also known as record filtering, allow you to filter data for each logged in user by applying user-based conditions or other record information. For example, users can see only records tied to their email. You can also set filters based on record fields, like task status or category, to show relevant records to each of your users. For example, show records that include the status marked as done. We'll dive deeper into conditional filters in future lessons, but for now, know that they help you show users only the data relevant to them. Now, let's quickly discuss the other actions available to you in the block settings panel, actions, visibility, and styles, and what each can do. In the actions tab, you can set up actions like creating, editing, or deleting data. In the styles tab, you can customize the look and feel of individual blocks, like adjusting the colors, padding, and borders to further align with your app's design. In the visibility tab, you can control who sees each block based on user roles, attributes, or custom logic. For example, you can ensure only managers see certain blocks or content. These tools give you even more control over how your app works, looks, and feels. Now, let's set up an item detail page, which is the final part of this lesson. So far, we focused on displaying multiple records in a single block. But what if users want to see more details about a specific record? That's where item detail blocks come in. For this, go to the pages area in the software studio. You can either create a new page for employee details, or since we started with a template, we'll click on the page that is already created for us. Once there, click on the item details block, scroll down in the source section, and choose the employee table. Then navigate to the content tab and map the key fields such as employee name, about me, and any other relevant details that you would like to add. Now, let's return to your dashboard page. Select the list block or any other block displaying the employees that you set up. Navigate to the actions tab and enable item on click option. Choose the open details page and select the employee details page that we just created. Now, when users click on a user, they'll be redirected to the employee details page, displaying the relevant information for that employee. And that's it. You just learned how to use blocks to visualize data in your application, enhance interactivity with search and filters, and create dynamic detail pages for record-specific content. These tools make your app more functional and engaging. In the next lesson, we'll dive deeper into action buttons, how to use them to let users add, edit, and manage data directly within your app. Until then, take some time to fine tune your app and I'll see you in lesson four.